So I recently had somebody reach out and say, what could they do to help them in every day if they felt a little bit of anxiousness? Or what could he do to improve his golf game? You know, maybe he's, he's played some good shots, but all of a sudden the game just gets away from him, gets a little frustrated, gets a little bit anxious on the next shot. So here's a couple of techniques that we can utilize in various different situations. And I'm just going to give you an example using it within golf. So one of the first things we can do is to control our state. So when you feel that feeling of anxiousness or, oh, how am I going to shoot the shot, is to be able to control our state to be actually in a good, positive upstate. So one that is more conducive to playing a good shot. So example, I would want to feel calm, feel confident in my shot, feel relaxed, no pressure, or whatever good states like that might be for you. So how would I access those states? Well, one way to do that is to install a resource anchor. So if you could imagine just the little, that little gap where the, the jaw and the skull come together, you'll feel there's that little connection point just behind the ear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to recall a potential state or a time when you felt that state, that feeling. And as soon as you feel that you go, you really connect with that feeling, that's when you're going to go and stack your anchor. Right? So you're going to go touch yourself behind the ear and you're going to apply some pressure. And as soon as you feel that you go out of that state, meaning it starts to dissipate, then you release the anchor. And you will do that for a number of different states, good positive states, things that you'd like to feel instead. And every time you feel you go out of state, you release and every time you're going into state, you're going to anchor this. So here's how you would do that. So example, let's say one of the states that you want to feel is a feeling of calm. So I would ask you, can you remember a time when you felt calm? Can you remember a specific time? Now, this might be around the time when you start feeling the calmness. Okay? So as soon as you feel the calmness, go and place the anchor. So can you remember a time that you felt calm? Can you remember a specific time? Now, as you go back to that time now, go right back to that time, float down into your body, see what you saw, hear what you heard, and really feel that feeling of calmness now. And you just feel and experience that calmness now. Now, as soon as I feel that feeling start to dissipate, I release. And now we're going to do another good state. So can you remember a time you felt totally confident? Can you remember a specific time? And as you go back to that time now, go right back to that time, float down into your body, see what you saw, hear what you heard, and really feel that feeling of confidence now. And as soon as you feel it dissipates, you release. Okay, so you get the gist of it. Each time you feel yourself going to that good state, you're going to anchor. As soon as you feel you go out of the state, you're going to release. So think of five or so good positive states that you'd like to feel instead of the anxiety, the anxiousness, the, oh, how am I going to play this shot? Okay. So that would be creating a resource anchor. Now, the purpose of that is that the next time when you are faced with that situation where you do feel a little bit of that anxiousness, you simply go and touch there behind the ear in the same spot. You go one, two, and what that would do is that will help you to recall all those good states which you've just anchored. It's almost like if you've ever smelt a certain smell or hear a certain song and it reminds you of a time and a place in the past. Example, I get certain smells and it reminds me of being back in the army or being back in boarding school. And so we all get anchored. These are conditioned responses. And all we're doing here is we're using it to our benefit. So we are going to connect all these good feelings to a certain touch point. And then when I want to feel those feelings, I'm going to trigger it, almost like switching a light on, so that I can feel all that good feeling and get rid of that 
blah feeling. You know, that feeling of a little bit of anxiousness. So that's the first technique. Now, the second one we can use is what's called peripheral vision. Now, we all know, of course, we've got very focused foveal vision. And we also have peripheral vision. So being able to see in our periphery. Of course, different people will be able to see at different degrees of periphery. And let's say around about yeah, 175 degrees or so. Now, what's very interesting is that when we access and go into this peripheral vision, we are actually activating our parasympathetic nervous system. And what that means is it helps to activate our peace response. You see, the opposite to that is our sympathetic nervous system, which activates our stress response. And if you could think of a time when maybe you were experiencing some fight or flight, right? so a stressful situation, what happens is we activate our sympathetic nervous system that drains a lot of the blood sort of from our brain and from the viscera and it shoots the blood towards our extremities so that we can run or we can fight. Now that's useful the fight or flight, getting the blood to the viscera, you know, to the, to the extremities so that we can fight or we can run away. But it's not so good if we are consistently in that state. So what we want to do is we want to be able to activate our parasympathetic, which is the peace response, which means more blood. It's more blood coming to the viscera, to the brain. And I can feel more calm. You see, because when we're in this peripheral vision, we're activating our parasympathetic and we feel more calm, more grounded. So how do we activate this parasympathetic nervous system or peripheral vision? Well, one way how you can do this is to imagine that you're looking at something a couple of meters beyond your fingers. So I'm not looking at my fingers. I'm looking two or three meters beyond that against the wall. And I'm going to keep my focus on that point on the wall. And while I keep my focus on that point of the wall, I'm going to slowly bring my fingers out, keep my focus on the wall, and bring my fingers out slowly while my eyes start to soften, the vision softens, and I can notice almost this 180 degrees. And I can just bring my hands down while I'm in that. Wow. And notice how you start feeling calmer. Almost like a light trance, you might say. Now, I want to go practice that a number of times. So every time I'm going to get really focused on the spot on the wall, then I'm going to slowly bring my fingers out only at the rate while I can keep focus on the spot on the wall and notice my fingers. Now, when I can notice my fingers there and I'm looking at the spot of the wall and I'm feeling that light, calm feeling, and I very slowly bring my fingers past my eyes. And just like we did the, the kinesthetic, the touch anchor earlier behind the ear, this time we are just doing it as a soothing visual anchor. And I'm gonna do that five times. So every time and go and anchor that. So that again, the next time I feel a little bit stressed, a little bit of the sympathetic nervous system being activated. Oh, how am I going to play this shot? All I do is I go slowly do that. And it would immediately take me into that more peripheral vision, more relaxed, more calm. So then I'm able to play the shot more appropriately. So that's the second thing we could do. Now, another thing you could do is, well, think of it this way. Very often when people feel this anxiety or anxiousness, it's because they are imagining all the bad stuff going to happen. Oh, what if I hit this and it goes into the water or I hit it and it goes into the, into the sand or exam anxiety. What if I don't know the, the answers or I fail? You see, whenever we get this anxiety, we are imagining something bad going to happen. In fact, Montaigne said, my life had been filled with terrible misfortunes, most of which never happened. 
So we imagine with this wonderful capacity, our brain and our mind to imagine, very often we imagine all the rubbish. Why don't we imagine good stuff instead? So the way to do this is to imagine that you've got a timeline. There's a time in your past and a time in your future. And people would imagine this in different ways. Some people might say it's from left to right. Some people might say it's from bottom to up or from back to front. But just imagine that you have this timeline. Essentially, all your memories, your past and your future, stretched out in a line. And if you could imagine that, just imagine that you could float up above that timeline so that you could look down on it and you can notice the present and you can notice all the memories in the past from above it looking down. And so now imagine that you can float out into your future to 15 minutes or half an hour after successful, and the key word is, successful completion of the task about which you were nervous previously. So if I was nervous about the exam and I knew I'm writing the exam at four o'clock this afternoon, when might I be finished? If I knew I was going to be finished by six o'clock, I would imagine floating out into my future timeline to six o'clock this evening. And I turn around and I'm looking back towards now and I can Imagine the event having completed successfully. And it's very important to imagine the event having completed successfully. You see, because when we imagine it having completed successfully, it's impossible to feel anxious about it. How could you feel anxious about something that's gone the way that you wanted to do? So therefore, if I'm about to play the shot, I can imagine having played it exactly the way that I want. And of course, I've fired my peripheral vision. I've activated my parasympathetic nervous system. I can even have activated my nice calming anchor. And then I can play my shot without the stresses and the concerns of how might I mess this up? You see, because it's when we overthink it, it's when we go, oh, how am I going to do this again? That it starts causing the anxiety and the stresses. Now, these are just three very quick, easy ways now you can do this. I've given you an example for using this in golf, but you can use this in many, many other ways. In fact, I just recently worked about three, four days ago, actually, with a young lady who was rewriting some of her exams. And she was feeling anxious about the exams coming up. And so we gave her a good resource anchor, showed her how to activate her parasympathetic nervous system, and also how to imagine that the exams have completed exactly the way that she wanted it to be. And now she's got three different techniques, three different strategies to help her feel calm in that moment. You see, because using the exam as the example, if anybody gets exam anxiety, what happens? We're feeling that sympathetic nervous system, the stress response, the blood drains from the brain, drains from the viscera, and in that stress response, very often people can't remember what they'd studied. They studied, they just can't recall the information. And that's where the problem is. Well, now, if we can make sure that we don't have the stress response, but rather the peace response, the parasympathetic nervous system, and the uh, brain is filled with blood, and I can feeling calmer, I can therefore access those learnings much easier. So I hope you found that useful. Go and practice them. Install five, at least five good states for you. And by the way, anytime you have a good state, maybe you just played a wonderful shot and you feel, wow, that was a great shot. Go and anchor it. And every time you feel something that's a good state, go and anchor it. And you will make it stronger and stronger and stronger. And practice your peripheral vision. And when you get into peripheral vision, just anchor it. So you keep on stacking and keep on making it stronger. And when you have an event coming up, imagine that you could float out to beyond that event, further into the future, and you're looking back towards now, and you can actually see the event having completed successfully. So I hope you found that useful, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you kindly.